Hey guys, Arthur here with another Autodesk Maya tutorial. Uh, today I'll be covering render passes. Well, very basic render passes. All we're gonna really do is AO, depth, and our rim shader I came across. So yeah, let's get to it. What we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna be rendering this. This is a rim shader. As you can see, it's only showing um, it's giving our geo an extra rim light. Then we can go through AO, depth, and oh dear, where are they? Depth and the beauty pass. There's something very wrong with this viewer. There you go, and the beauty pass. Awesome. So, yeah, let's start. So let me delete out these layers. Let's delete this. Delete my depth. And let's delete this rim. Now you might want to have your your camera set up. So I'm working with camera two. There you go. This should be your render cam. Your render camera set up. And now let's set up the the basic Passes. All right. Wait. Sorry. Boom. Boom. So first off is our beauty pass. That's everything that contains color, shadows, reflections, and basic, basic information. You can always separate reflections and shadows, but those are more advanced passes which I cannot cover now. So here, um, it would be wise to group all the all the pieces of your scene. So group your geo, group your lights, group your character geo, and group your background geo, and your lights. Yeah. All right, so for, the, for our beauty pass, all we need is our lights and our geo. It's pretty straightforward. Add them to a new render layer, and rename this to beauty. All right. Then next will be, that's all it is. It's really just a copy of them. It's technically not a copy. It's really just the geo and the lights. It will make your renders faster because now instead of rendering from the master layer, it doesn't have to go through the other stuff in your scene. All it will read is just the geo and the lights. Okay, now let's do an AO pass. We need geo and lights. Add that to a new layer, ambient occlusion, AO, deselect whatever you're selected, whatever is selected. Then in AO, right click, hit attributes. Well, before, what we used to do was you have to select, you have to select all your geo, apply a new surface shader, apply a mental ray AO shader on that um, surface shader but now what, what Maya does is it now has a preset to do everything for you so just hit occlusion and there you go pretty straightforward so now all you have to do is change the occlusion settings so if I render this out now it will come out quite washed out quite quite weird so I usually start with 32 a spread of 1 and a max distance of 10. I usually start out with these settings. If I render this out, um, I will get this here. So now, with the AO set aside, let's proceed to our next render layer, um, our depth channel. Our depth is really just a duplicate of the AO, so copy layer. And let's change this to depth. Okay, there is something I forgot to do in the AO pass. Um, let's select the AO again, then hit our render options. Here in AO, we do not need, if ever you are working with Final Gather, we do not need Final Gather. So what we do is, and don't go in and just uncheck this. What you want to do is right click, create a layer override. This means it will only affect this layer and uncheck this. That's it. 
And do the same for your depth. So create a layer override and uncheck that. We do not need Final Gather for our depth channel. So now, right click depth, same thing. We used to do a lot of stuff to actually get a depth channel, but now there's a preset. Luminance depth. There you go. But this is not as straightforward as the AO. What we have to do is we have to go in and change some values um, by breaking them. So let's break these two values. You do not need to break the main value node. All you have to do is just break these two. Um, I usually start with 20 depending on how far your camera is, but my camera is quite far. So I'll select, I will type in 150. And let's render that out real quick. So it's fairly fast because depth, depth is really just a data pass. It's not it has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with the lighting. It's really just a depth data pass. As you can see, there are areas of the geo where I wanted to smooth it out. If we check out our AO pass, you can see the spikes are quite smooth. This is smooth. But when we go to our depth pass, everything is hardened out. Um, I have to render it again. <laughs> there you go. Everything's hardened out. So to solve that problem, let's go to our mental. Let's go to our render options. And we are currently rendering with Maya software, which does not support um, smoothed geo by just hitting three unlike in mental ray it does so we render with mental ray and again check if your final gather is off good and let's render that again it will render a bit slower because now it's reading your subdiv levels and your smoothed out geo but again it is quite fairly quick Alright, now let's proceed to our, oh, sorry, my phone. Okay, anyways, let's proceed to our last layer, which is our rim shader layer. Um, all we need is our geo, but not everything. We just need our character geo and apply that to a new layer, like this rim. Now, there are things I want to shine, so I don't want the fins to be too shiny. I do not want these extra ones to be shiny. All I want is the skeleton and the shell to really shine. So first off, I select everything and apply surface shader. This is surface shader 14, okay. Then for these two, I apply a new surface shader, separate. And then this is 15. Okay. Let's go to our hyper shade. And let's graph this out. Surface shader 15. Here. Graph this. Okay. Um let me go in and delete all the unused notes. Alright. Now, surface shader. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to make a shader wherein um, it will only have color on the edges no matter what camera angle you are in. So to do that, first off, you'll need a ramp. And a sampler info. Now, what the sampler info does, it's a data node that takes that has data information of the scene according to camera angle and we can take that information apply it to the ramp before it is applied to the surface shader it will change the behavior of the ramp towards the surface shader according to camera angle so anyways let's apply this to the out color and as you can see it's applied 
um, depending on what the UVs of this is, right? So now let's change that with the sampler info. Apply the sampler info to the ramp. Let's apply that to the ramp. Ooh, default. There you go. It will come up with a connection editor. So now what we want to do is we take the facing ratio of all the normals according to camera angle and make it face the V coordinates of the UVs. This is not this is a bit misleading for somebody who doesn't know this. This is not really the UVs you put on your geo, it's really just the UV coordinates of your geo according to camera angle. It's quite hard to wrap around, but um, if I render this out, you'll see the effect. So now the ramp changed. It is now affecting the edges. So no matter what camera angle I'm in, let me render this out. It renders out quite fast. Oh yeah, and again, you do not need final gather. So let me cancel this. And let's go to our rim, indirect lighting. Right click on final gather. Great layer override and uncheck that. Now let's render this out. So as you can see, it is now acting towards the edges of our geo. Towards yeah. So now we can play around with the colors. I won't let this finish. Um, so here in our out color, because all we want is a rim. So here in our out color, um, the furthest color out is red. So let's change that to white. And the furthest color in, we just want a black color because we don't really need color inside. Change that to black. And as you can see here in our hyper shade, it's changing. Now it becomes a rim, a rim color. And if we render this out, um, we have a white background, so we won't see it. Let's, we might as well make this red. There. Do not change color for some reason. There. Now if we render this out, you'll see what the rim shader does. So now, there you go. It applies a rim on the edges of your geo at any camera angle so this can affect even if your camera was moving or rotating it would it would act like this which is really cool because if you want to control your your rim lights or if you find it hard to create rim lights within your scene you could always fake it using this technique and let's save this out save image PNG save that six Okay, and this is all done usually using batch rendering. So you go in and you batch render here in render, batch render, and it should come out in your project files. But for the sake of speed and for the video, I won't be doing that. All right, so everything's good. Let us now open After Effects. So as you can see, I've been comping a while ago. This took several takes. Let me delete this. All right, fresh new scene, open comp, new composition. And these are my settings. Okay. Now, let me open those files. So here in my project folder, in my images, take everything and just drag and drop them into After Effects. All right. So the first thing we need is our beauty pass. This will be our base. It contains all the color, all the shadows, all the reflections, and all the information we need for a base. Now, as you can see, it comes a bit washed out at areas that should not be. Like, how could light even touch this area? Well, there is bouncing, but that's too much bounce, so it comes out quite washed out. We control that using the ambient occlusion pass throw that over toggle switches and multiply that and now it's darker 
the areas where it should be and now let's throw in a luminance depth pass now this I don't usually use for depth alone I add it over top the the AO to add more to add more luminance see so it really adds a more dramatic effect to your scene makes darker areas darker and lighter areas um doesn't really touch the lighter areas what am I saying anyways um let's add the rim which is my layer 6 here and let's change the color first off you might want to add this over there so it will remove anything black and we'll leave off this nice rim so let's change the color effect color correction exposure no hue and saturation god it's been a while after effects wow there and now we have a rim wait a minute why is there an outline <laughs> oh dear Nah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. This should not come with an outline. Must be the. I mean, that is weird. Let's try not adding it over. Is there any other way to do it? Because in Nuke, it's different. Don't really add that over. You do something else. So I'll just go in and really throw around some blending options no definitely not overlay <laughs> green nah. yeah I'm pretty sure it was add. <coughs> anyways it just adds that rim so if I remove this you can see the rim that's being added yeah doesn't work very well with After Effects. That is so weird. You might want to add, let's try taking the mat, mat choker, simple choker. There you go. Let's choke this mat. There, we just choked in the, the extra outline. Ah, not bad for someone who hasn't used After Effects for a while. Anyways, that adds the rim. You could add a bit of blur to make it look like it's glowing a bit, or let's increase the let's increase the exposure. Exposure, increase that. There it makes it more shiny. That's too much. Now we don't need to increase the exposure. So, anyways, that adds an extra rim, make it more realistic-ish. There, and finally, let's add the depth. Let's take our Z depth. What this is, is it's technically a Luma pass, a Luma mat. So all you have to do is add a solid, throw that under this mat, and here in track mat, Luma inverted mat. There you go. Everything dark will become blurred. But if we toggle switches again, make this an adjustment layer, toggle again, and let's go to effect blur and compound blur mm, too much blur there so now we have a nice clean depth of field and that's it guys that's all I have for today and I hope this helped if it does um, leave me a comment I guess and yeah tell me what you wanna see next <laughs> Cheers.